This episode of Techno Buffalo is brought to you by Full Sail University. Welcome back to another episode of Rumor Roundup. This is the show where we round up all the tech rumors from the week and condense them into one video so you know what is coming in the future. Up this week though, we only have one topic and one topic only. We are gonna talk about the next generation PlayStation, the PS4, Orbis, whatever you wanna call it, but there's a ton of rumors coming and they are coming fast and furious. So this is Rumor Roundup, let's talk some PS4. So the rumor mill's been churning fast and furious with PS4 news. We published an article earlier on Techno Buffalo that essentially said the same anonymous source who was leaking a ton of next generation Xbox 360 info late last summer actually and was trying to sell it online is now bringing us some pretty specific info about the PS4 or Orbis as Sony is internally calling it. Super Day, as he's known, has provided the website Kotaku with a set of 90 PDF files that outline specs related to the system's developer hardware, as well as the controllers and accounts. The sheer complexity of the information in conjunction with its credibility based on other known rumors makes this pretty probable, unlike some other Xbox-related rumors that have been floating around the internet for the past few weeks. This information is at least probably going to be somewhat accurate. It's important to note though, the specifics below are for development hardware only, not the console consumers are actually gonna buy at a retail. Some or all the specs might be different, and in retail versions, they likely will be. This does, though, give us a pretty good idea of the possible maximum power of the system, as a retail console wouldn't be beefier than development hardware, of course. System memory, eight gigs are gonna be on board. Video memory, it's gonna have 2.2 gigabytes. CPU is gonna be pretty beefy. You're gonna have four dual-core AMD 64 bulldozers. GPU is an AMD R10. It's gonna have four USB 3.0 ports, two Ethernet ports. Audio output, we're gonna have HDMI, optical 2.0, 5.1, and 7.1 channels, Blu-ray support, and 160 gigabyte hard drive. You can expect that hard drive size though to get much, much, much larger probably by the time the console launches. There's gonna be a huge push for downloadable content. In addition to hard drives on the console itself, the documents have some pretty interesting tidbits about how you control the games it plays. The system will of course support six axis and DualShock 3 controllers, and appears to support the Move controller as well. So if you wanna use that little ice cream cone looking thing. So it obviously has a lot in common with the current PlayStation controller, the big key is that it's gonna feature, rather than a touchscreen, as a lot of folks had guessed before, it's gonna feature a capacitive touch pad. It's gonna to support two multi-point touch and click input. Shape of the controller, be it uh, the boomerang, like we saw with the original PS3 and they announced it, or something more like the Vita is totally unknown. It's also gonna feature improved motion sensing, vibration, RGB, LED, and a ton of other awesomeness in there. So what we might get is a sony up Wii U type control pad. So despite rumors to the contrary, the documents don't make any mention of any sort of biometric features at all. The other big surprise here is the controller is going to have a share button. There's nothing really known about what it could entail whether it be for sharing a screenshot from the game you're playing or send it out via social media or something really specific with interacting with the console. Documentation goes into a ton of detail about how accounts are gonna work on the system as well. One of the most interesting aspects of the accounts though is that they apparently will sync with the controller within the system as well and automatically bring up the option to log in with your personal account although accounts aren't locked to controllers. This could bring new meaning to the age old, that's my controller fight that we might've been having with siblings for the past few decades. I know I have with my sisters when I was growing up, with my wife now, I gotta use when I play my games, the gold controller. Makes me feel like James Bond. Again, all it needs to be remembered though, this is a rumor, but it does seem pretty plausible and it could be pretty interesting to see how this compares to whatever Sony ends up showing at E3, Gamescom, or wherever else it finally gets unveiled at. Those specs are incredibly beefy. Are the specs enough though to keep the console current for 10 years? Uh, that really is yet to be seen. I will say this for Sony. The PlayStation 3 when it launched had crazy awesome beefy specs and it has kept up pretty nicely with technology over the past decade. So you gotta figure Sony knows a thing or two at making sure the console does not become obsolete over the years. Uh, I'm really curious to see what developers can do. Certainly you don't get the full power of the games until three, four, five years into the console's lifespan. But if you think current generation PS3 games look awesome, I cannot wait to see what they're gonna look like on PS4. Assuming we'll have support for 4K, which over the next decade will probably become pretty mainstream, it is going to be awesome. So what games are you looking forward to most? Love to hear your comments down below. Do you agree or disagree with any of these PS4 rumors? One thing is for certain though, 
All these rumors can be put to rest in the coming months, as I think we might get a hint of what Sony has to offer, perhaps even before E3. So now we've rounded up all the console news, let me take a minute to thank our friends and sponsors at Full Sail University. You know the mobile app industry is on fire right now, and Full Sail University's online mobile development bachelor's degree program can teach you the skills that you need to take advantage of those emerging opportunities. In this degree, you'll learn both the programming and business sides of mobile development so that you can concept, develop, deploy, and market an application from start to finish. You'll explore advanced programming languages, visual frameworks, usability principles, and app development for iOS and Android operating systems. Between the App Store and Google's Play Store, over 50 billion apps have been downloaded with really no sign of slowing down. If you feel like you're ready to master technology, compete in the software in this rapidly growing industry, check out fullsale.edu slash technobuffalo to learn more about this online program. Again, it's fullsale.edu slash technobuffalo. So thank you guys for watching another episode of Rumor Roundup. Check us out at technobuffalo.com to hear these rumors before they air on the show. I'm John Rettinger. I'll see you next video.